So, but let's go to the type and, and, and let's look at the quality of the, the actual charcoal that is used in the filter, these carbon filters, because the carbon and the charcoal is the same thing. So the key, there are two keys you have to, to know, or th three points. One is that uh, most of these, uh, these charcoals are contaminated with aluminum, maybe up to 75% of them, of the, the typical carbon filters. And uh, the, so you want to select a material that is relatively aluminum free. And the best on the market that we know of is coconut. Coconut shells, they ground them down, convert them to, to charcoal, and it's relatively aluminum free. But then there's a second step that's done, and, and this you want to look for also, that is if they acid wash the charcoal, this will tend to eliminate the, eliminate the aluminum. So, you know, what good is it to have a charcoal filter uh, and remove the chloride, even go with, remove the disinfection byproducts real slowly, but then you still have aluminum in your water. So you want to take it, you know, really carefully analyze this. Now, the other component, as I mentioned earlier, is fluoride. So if you've, if you've got, if you're removing disinfection byproducts and uh, you're taking care of that issue, but you still, and all the chlorides go out, but you still have fluoride, it may be more, even worse than the chloride, the chlorine, rather. So that's definitely an issue you want to address. Now, another area of concern is the fact that these filters, these charcoal filters, tend to over time become contaminated with molds and bacteria. So that's a point you want to consider. And so many times you'll notice a change in the flavor of the water. That means you have a contaminated water. So uh, for the last, yeah, ever since I started the site over 10 years ago, I've been wanting to provide my readers with a high quality water filter, but there's so many issues that go into this that, you know, it's really been a struggle. One of the issues uh, that, that, you know, where I was struggling with was the alkalinity of the water. And there are many devices on the market, typically devices tend to be more expensive, uh, closer to $1,000 or more or so, that tend to provide this benefit, or at least perceived benefit. And I actually purchased one in the mid-90s and um, didn't find uh, that it worked too well for me and, and wound up not using it. I've reviewed the literature on alkaline water and even though we do have alkaline bodies and it's good to make sure that we have an, uh, an alkaline pH in our blood, I'm not convinced of the literature or personally that uh, this is a, a really great or certainly cost-effective solution. Uh, now the other w a component, as mentioned earlier with the distilled water and the reverse osmosis, is the structuring of the water. And let me give you a little hint. If you have RO system, and I, I like, personally like RO water, you just have to be careful, is that you have to restructure, you have to remineralize it. And one of the ways you can do that is you can add high quality mineral salt to the water. And my favorite, of course, is the Himalayan uh, salt and just add about a quarter teaspoon into about a gallon of water and that will help quite a bit with not only the remineralization but also to help uh, uh, address the pH issues. So with, um, so that would be the help for the, the reverse osmosis, but with the uh, the structuring of the water, because the, the RO system and certainly it is still is not, that's, that's going to be an issue. One of the simple ways it can restructure the water is to actually take the water, put it in a uh, glass jug and at least not in the winter or uh, you'll put it outside and have the sun shine through it and that will tend to restructure it and, and to really do a good job for it. Uh, you can also tend to put it under a magnet under the, the, I think the south, you have to look that up, it's either north or the south pole of the magnet will tend to restructure. So that's another thing you can do, a powerful magnet. Um, so these are areas I was looking at, but, but what I ultimately concluded uh, uh, after many, many years of study that uh, probably a high quality carbon filter that one you can put on your tabletop would be the best solution. And that's actually what we put together after years and years of putting this together. We're finally able to, to offer to you now for all these years. And this is what it looks like. This is actually something that sits on your tabletop or countertop and you apl apply this something easily installed right into your faucet. And, and the water comes out here. You might notice that there's two filters, and you're wondering, what are those two filters for? Well, the first filter that the water goes through is this. And this is an aluminum silicate filter, and essentially it removes all the fluoride. Most likely, your carbon filter, your, your filter filtration you're, you're now using now, this is RO, does not remove fluoride. And this is the, the, the component that allows it to do that. Now, the second filter is really interesting. It is a combination filter. You can see it has the activated charcoal from coconut that's acid washed, but on top of that is sitting a KDF filter. Now, KDF is a brand name for a copper zinc filter, which does three great things. One is that it removes the inorganic contaminants, things like heavy metals, like aluminum and lead and, and uh, mercury, uh, and any of those metals that would in there, it would remove it. So that's the first good thing. Secondly, is that it tends to be bacteriostatic, so that it will tend, will tend to uh, eliminate 
the, uh, any odors that are produced from bacteria or mold, so it will keep that under control. And then it, al it also forms as a, a catalyst so that when the chlorine comes in here first, it actually catalyzes to, to form chloride, which is inert, and, and then allows the media, the carbon filter, to work longer. And these units have been used and, and documented to be effective for at least one year, so you don't have to be changing these out every few months, six months, but you can, you know, basically once a year is all you have to do that. And uh, they've got the literature and documentation to support that. So overall, uh, I'm absolutely convinced, there's just no doubt in my mind, that uh, this is one of the most cost-effective solutions that you could possibly have for you and your family to provide them with high quality water, high quality water because we all need that if we're going to stay healthy. So really, that's been the focus of the site. And hopefully, you can use the information, even if you don't pick up this one, uh, you can use the information I provided to help you select a high quality filter because it doesn't make any sense to purchase one that's not going to provide you with the benefits that you and your family need. And really the key of this site has always been to provide you with the information, the tools, the resources that you require to help you and your family take control of your health.